that. How do you think her looks? That's fabulous. I told you it would. I uh, wish you'd always keep it like this. That lamp looks divine there, and these chairs are just the right color. I told you we would look good in here. Suppose Harold comes back. He isn't coming back until tomorrow morning. No, but suppose he comes tonight. He's mad about those antiques. What do you think he'll say if he goes into his room and finds out he's stolen them? Don't dramatize. He's never stolen all of his furniture. Just two chairs, the sofa, the tables, the lamp ball, the rug, and the face. That's all. And the food, up. That's more than able than anything. Oh, do stop worrying, Sally. Well, you don't know how. So you won't even let anyone touch his antiques. Look, we'll put everything back as soon as Mr. Lambert leaves. Now stop being dreary. Uh, frankly, I don't think we should have done it. I mean, anyway, Harold and Why not, for heaven's sake? The room looks divine now. Just look at it. Well, George Bamberger is a multi-millionaire. He's lived his life against this sort of furniture. A few stolen bits aren't going to impress him. He's coming to see the work of an unknown sculptor. And if you ask me, it would look much better to him if he found me as I really am, a poor artist. It might touch his heart. It might, but it certainly won't impress Daddy. And remember, he's coming too. As if I could forget. Why you had to invite your monster father tonight? I just can't think. Oh, not again. This is too bloody much. He's going to be persuaded of a fit husband for you. By watching a famous collection by some of my work, then he doesn't deserve to have me as a son in law. He just wants to prove you can earn your living. Okay, what if Bamberger doesn't like my work? He will, darling, just stop worrying. I can't. Get me a whiskey. I've got a full It's all going to be a disaster. An A1. Call the laws. 24 karat disaster. The trouble with you is you're my daddy calls a GED, a determined defeatist. The more I hear about your daddy, the more I hate him. I loathe military men anyway, and in any case, he's bound to hate me. All you have to do is stand up to him, Daddy. Only bully to people who think are great of him. Well, I am. You haven't even met him yet. It doesn't make any difference. I'm a complete physical coward. He smells on my breath. Oh, don't be ridiculous <laughs> here. Thanks. What did he do to you? One thing, he can refuse to let me marry you. Oh, is that sweet, you fool? I can give her. No, go ahead. Train your suit. She looks top of you. Oh, you look divine. Really? I mean, I've mm -hmm. never seen her so lovely. Bedroom, will you? 
haven't finished in here yet. Well, I've just remembered that there are some fuses in the bedroom, in that drawer where you found the photograph. Go and get one, will you? I don't think there are. I didn't see any there. Don't argue, just look. All right, keep your head on. I'm sorry, I'm sure there are some there. You must have missed them. Well, what about the matches? We'll have to mend it in the dark, that's all. Please hurry, darling. Oh, tell me really. Hello? Well, 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 how are you? That's fine, 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 fine. Stop saying what? Carol? Darling? Clear! What are you doing here? I thought you were in Finland. But you've hardly been gone six weeks. Where are you speaking from? The air terminal? Oh, no, that's just not a good idea tonight. I'm terribly busy, and I'm afraid I just can't get out of it. It's business. Like, is there anything here to real dreary socks? I told you! Well, try the other drawers! Look, I can't talk now. Can I come tomorrow? Where will you be? Look, I told you no, Pia, not tonight. Look, the situation's changed. Something's happened this past month. I can't see anything, Bryn, please. Pia, I've got to go. So go to me with what? Well, oh, yes, of course it has. I mean, you can't expect things to stay frozen, can you? There's nothing here. I haven't seen any matches at all. Oh, stop wailing. No, not you. I'll call you tomorrow. Goodbye. What was that? Just a chump. Did you find the fuse? Oh, we can't find anything in this. We've got to find the matches. We certainly must. I'll try the pub. Yeah, you must need some help. 
Can you see the need to spot the trouble? No, not really. It's just a few stopping, really. It happens all the time. I mean, it won't be the first few times, I dare say, it won't be the last. Ha <laughs> ha! In the meantime, you've got no matches, right? Right. No candles, right? Right. No PE? No PE? Basic efficiency. Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. By that, I mean the simple state of being at attention in life. A.A. At attention, sorry. Rather than at ease. Well, I'm certainly not at ease. Well, what are you going to do about it? Do? Do not call me, sir. I don't like it. Never like it. I'm sorry. Now, look, Olivia, this is an emergency. Anyone can see that. No one can see anything, sir. That's an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how accident-friendly you are? 
Just stay here, throw out those wet clothes, and have a drink. Well, I must say, you are in a bossy mood. The darkness must bring up the dominant you. <laughs> Our time, Mr. Orange, 
and such a charming word too, a refinement. <laughs> to tell you the truth, dear, you and I are never going to hear that word used again properly in our lifetime. Because they don't care. They haven't got a clue, and they don't care. And you and I have got to get used to it. My father used to say, before the bombs came and burned our dear little castle of Wendover, the game's up, my girl. We middle classes are as dead as the dodo. Poor father, how right he was. Your father was a professional man. But he was a man of God, Colonel. Ah. How are those drinks coming, Tumbling? They're fine, Dad. <laughs> They're all giving me a Let me help you. All right, you can take the good lemons in the cell, if you'd like. Very well. Here you are. Have you the turn from the circle? Right, you are, Tumbling? So, your father was a minister then? Oh, he was a saint. <laughs> <sailor. laughs> I'm only thankful he never lived to see the rudeness and vulgarity of life today. Oh, you're so right, Bernie. <laughs> rudeness and vulgarity, that's it to a T. The manners of some people today are beyond belief, honestly. Did I tell you what happened last Friday in my china shop? I don't think I did. No, Mr. Orange, I don't think so. Well, I just opened up, I was <laughs> about to the tank, and I was dusting off the teapot. You know, the way wood collects the dust to something shocking. When you would walk in for that Mrs. Lemons. You know, the ginger head that I told you about? The one who thinks she's God's gift to bachelor. Woo! Oh, here's your Mr. Lemon. Oh, thank you, most kind. Anyways, she's got a hand of bar, as I told her last week. It's a birthday present for an old geese she's having a bit of a ding-dong with an old court, hoping to collect his loot when he dies. As I heard the situation. I'm a real good judge of character, Bernie, as you know, and she's a real grasp of iron, all. So tell! Now, it's a rocky chair! I can see a rocky chair when I came in here! Oh, yes, dear, you might want to watch out for that. It's in a pretty rare condition. I told her print about it several times. Anyways, this is Paul. It's a nice bit of quality portrait. Very good boy, absolutely authentic. And they had it for 60 pounds. If you got infinitely the best of bargain, you no know arguments about that. Well, Betsy Francis, and her old daughter from one of them, very fond hair you know, tarty French like. And what if that girl had a girl, half her age, and twice her looks? Look! <laughs> exactly, you know the sort. Do you know what she says to me? <laughs> Mr. Gorn, she says, I've been shit. No! I took these bars over to Bill Everett. He said, it's not what you say it is at all. Chinese and very rare. He says it's a 20th century piece of trash of Taiwan. Does he, I said. Does he? I keep calm. I always do and I'm royal. Yes, she says he does. And I thank you to give me my money back. <laughs> I counted the ten, and then I let it happen. In the first place, I didn't expect my customers to go behind my bank and check up on my honesty. The second, Bill Everett is a thinker and is finally done. There is no need for pig. Third, the same applies to you too, Mrs. Levin. And don't you dare to cross my threshold again. Because if you do, I won't make myself responsible for the consequences. Hi, Mr. Orange. How splendid of you. Here's your gym You deserve it. Oh, it's proper blazing. I didn't care. Where are you, Daddy? Where are you? I have your scotch. Here, yeah, totally. Charity old witch, telling me about pottery? <laughs> Do you care for pottery yourself, Colonel? I'm afraid I don't know very much in parties, madam. I like some of that Chinese stuff. You get some lovely colours. Like the one on the statue I saw when I came in here. What statue is that, then, Colonel? The one on the record player, sir. Very fine. Why did not Brin possess any Chinese stuff? What's it up with this statue? Well, we've all got what our drinks, so all we'd like to propose that is Everyone raise your glasses. To the twenty-fifth horse, confusion to his enemies. I'll drink to that. Confusion. Up the old twenty-fifth. Thank you, something that was very touching of you. Very touching indeed. Damn it! That's cheap! I've got a bit of lemon. Oh, horrible. Quite horrible. Now, now with the alcohol, I suppose. Oh dear, how unpleasant. <laughs> oh look, love, it's same with me. You get the better lemon, but I get the gin. Girl? You, scotch for me. 
Grimsley had a Buddha. I don't! Tell them have a Buddha on the house of confusion! <laughs> what? The devil! Are you doing that? Don't be rash, Dan. No naked flames, remember? Don't be impertinent. Did you go to the pub? Oh, certainly, but it was first. You did go to the pub in that time. Surely you couldn't have. Of course I did. But it's for our future wedding, Mr. Miller. Beats must from the devil drives, Miss Manuel. Whatever the hell that means. <laughs> no, no, look, here, there's something very peculiar going on in this room. I may not know hearts, Mr. Miller, but I know men. I know a lion in the light and one in the dark. Daddy who? No, I don't want to doubt your word, sir. All the same, I'd like your own fresh went out to that public house. Well, Rin! Daddy's talking to you! What are you shouting for? Uh, of course, I know! He's absolutely right! Well, what's your answer? That was a very perceptive remark you made there, sir. Do I have a thought of that? Now look, you here! I've been extremely patient, but it's key, key now. Patient, exhausted. You think I'm going to let my daughter marry a born liar? You are very much mistaken! Oh! 